Hey everybody, we've got a Polyvision PJ905 in today for repair. This particular one, I believe, has a bad DLP chip. Ooh, and what sounds like probably a bad color wheel, too. I'm going to let the picture come up, and then we'll take a look at the screen and see where the pixels are going bad. There you go. This picture's going to jump in a second. But you can see the dots where the mirrors aren't flipping, and those will go white when the picture goes black. All right, I'm gonna try this camera angle. We'll see how this works out. First thing we'll do is take out the non-captive door screw. The door slides off. First signs of dust are revealed. Next, take the lamp out. Three screws. Lamp's a little older. Year and a half, two years maybe. It does have a good coating on the lens, as you can see if I... There you go, that reddish blue, that's good did get hot though there should be a sticker right here but it fell off and you can see the discoloration here so this lamp ran hot once we open it up I think we're gonna see a lot of dust on the other side of that fan but first we're gonna take all the non screw gun screws out and I could put a smaller tip on the screw gun but I'm not gonna bother so there's two here, and then two on the bottom going up, and these have to come out. Next, these guys. Two, three, four, and the fifth one in the middle is different. You can see that's a much longer screw. Then in the front, or in the top, got these two. Then we can start separating the uh, lid from the rest of it. Now there is a keyboard wire, so don't just pull it straight up and off. Just get it to pop loose. Like that. And then there's the uh, keyboard wire right there. It's a little clip. Now that comes off and the dust is more apparent. You can see a bunch of dust over here. Let's spin it around and look at that lamp fan and see if it's as bad as I suspect. Wow, oh, it's actually not as bad as I expected it to be. I'll, uh, I'm gonna put a picture in here, hopefully, maybe right here or over here, where I'll just overlay it. But usually these are much dirtier. This one's not too bad. I think this one was cleaned a few years ago though. There's still a bunch of other dust. So it does need to be cleaned. You can see it behind the uh, lens here. That's actually quite a bit of buildup. I think on the back of the optic assembly we'll probably see some. This is the uh, replacement assembly I have. It has a, a used but good color wheel and a used but good DLP chip in there. So I'm debating either swapping the lens onto here or just moving the two pieces. We'll see, I'm gonna take it apart and clean it first. All right, so to clean it, we need to take it apart a bit more. 
So let's get front IR, color wheel sensor, color wheel drive unplugged. And then, uh, what's that uh, light engine fan? Or, uh, yeah, this blows on the DLP chip or the heat sink. Then we have uh, lamp exhaust fan, blower fan, uh, this one, that's this wire, and then the power supply fan. And this is the ballast control. We need to take the main board out here for cleaning. And then the um, temperature fuse, I guess we could call it, this thing here. All right, so now, So that's five more screws. Once those five screws are out, this should come out. See? Now there's a, a couple wires plugged in underneath. That's supposed to feed through the hole. Or I guess we could do it this way too, just slide the wires out. But there's a low voltage power wire in this back corner. There we go. And then there's a ground wire on this side right there, but I'm going to leave it because this should fold back enough now. So we need to take the optic area, the optic block out, this thing here, the optic assembly, and then we need to clean all that so I just want to have it open. So to take this out, it's only three long-ish machine screws. you can see these are longer than the other screws. And I'll usually just kind of pull forward on this little ring just a teeny bit. And just go straight up. Watch the color wheel, make sure you don't hit it. Yeah, that doesn't feel like it's spinning very well. And there's some dust on there, not a ton, but oof. Look at the bottom. Man. So it looks like somebody attempted to clean this. Or it was cleaned and then it got dirty again. Well, we'll start with this first. Let's clean this up. Okay, everything got a good cleaning. So before we uh, start switching parts... I'm going to mark the original. So just a little, little X on all the spots. Just so I don't get them mixed up. Be careful when you set these down. The uh, color wheel should be clear on all sides, but you know, just be aware. All right, so let's take this one off. These come off pretty easy. It's just, oops, just two screws. Don't go dropping your screwdriver. And there's the color wheel and the sensor. The uh, sensor is what can cause a lot of problems with your color wheel. You've seen it in other videos. The photocoupler, that little black thing right there. I'm going to get it to focus. There we go. This thing 
One side is uh, an infrared LED and the other side is an infrared receiver. So it sends light out. And for most of the rotational cycle, that light, oh, come on. There we go. That light gets reflected back until that little black mark comes around. That's an index mark. When that black mark comes around, it breaks the beam or breaks the reflection and tells the projector that the wheel just went past this segment, which is uh, green. It looks red, but I'm pretty sure that's actually green. Let's see. Is it the white behind it? Oh, no, it's red. Okay. So, and the red segment goes past it knows. That's how it times itself to have the right color at the right time. So for our purposes, we're going to use the color wheel off the replacement unit. So that comes off the same way. Again, two screws. But instead of putting this directly on, I'm going to set it on a foam stand while I change the uh, DLP chip first. But I want to get this ready. So we'll get this one ready. It's already been cleaned and tested. I'm just going to set it on that foam. So I'm also going to look at the light tunnel. That looks okay. Right there, I don't see any burning or anything. Sometimes these can get too hot. And you'll see just like burn marks on the metal. All right, so first, let's get the old one off. Get the new one ready. All right, that heat sinks off. This got hot. It got so hot that the uh, heat sink paste it kind of became a glue. Did you hear that? That was that splitting. Man. All right. So let's separate the DMD board from the donor. the donor DMD the whole thing and there's the DLP chip in the middle just gonna get a chamois pad just to remove any dust we'll just take that chip off you can see there's no little speckles which is good all right so we have the new chip ready, a heat sink paste, and let's get this one ready. Now there's no reason to change the, uh, the entire board, just the chip. You can see those pins, those pins line up. Oh, there's a little bit of 
notes from the old heatsink goo. All right, so now I'm going to put the, uh, the DMD board back on, and the connector goes the same way as the standoffs, and there's little holes that those line up with. tape out of the way. And just remember the uh, that side goes towards the color wheel. You know, essentially just take it off, put it back on the way you took it off. You know, we could do all this with the color wheel in place, but I figure it's less chance of getting damaged. So here's the old one. Let me wipe it off, and you'll still be able to see all the bad pixels when I get it close. Let's get it to focus. Come on, there we go. See that? Those are all little mirrors that didn't flip. They got hot and they got stuck that way. Each one of those little dots is a mirror that changes position or reflect light or not reflect light. All right, so that is back in. I have the heat sink paste on there. So let's set that back in. And then we'll put the the clip. You can see those just go in that. Nope, 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 nope. There we go. And now we're just going to look in that gap and make sure it looks even, which it does. So now we can put the color wheel on. And again, I'm going to use the um, used but good color wheel. There are alignment pins next to the screws. I mean, it's obvious. You can see threaded hole, not threaded hole, but just pay attention. You don't offset it. So let's get that one started, and then we'll run this one in. And just bring these down until they stop, and then just a little bit more. All right. So I'm going to put the old color wheel out of the way. Because we're going to put this back in. Hopefully, plug it all back in, fire it up, and have good things. That's the uh, goal, at least. So to put this back in, tilt the board back. Uh, I'm just gonna tuck that over, uh, tuck that over here. Will that stay? And again, this goes in. Pay attention to the color wheel. Don't let it hit on the metal. It's got to go behind the metal. And then the optic block itself has some pins it'll sit down on. Once you get it straight, oh, come on. There we go. Getting it through that ring right is a little, I don't want to say tricky, but it can get in the way. that back in. Remember it's the three longer screws that hold the optic block in. 
optic assembly. I think optic block might just be LCD, but you know what I mean. All right, let's get everything reconnected. So we need to plug the low voltage back in. Remember the uh, wires don't want to get pinched underneath the board. And those don't get unplugged. There we go. So now the wires should be in the right spot. We're going to plug in the DMD board front here first. And then I'm going to put two screws in up here to hold that down while we secure the rest of it. And don't forget this ground strap. And then the other three Now normally we would have to connect the top or reinstall the top to test it, but I have a, a way around that, which I will share. All right, so those are in. Start plugging wires in. I could probably take my gloves off now, but yeah, I might have to open it up again. I wear the gloves to keep from getting fingerprints on the glass. And also to protect myself from any, you know, random crud. All right, color wheels plugged in. Ballast reconnected. Lower or uh, DMD fan. Let's see. Lower fan, lamp fan, and power supply fan. And then, of course, this thing the uh, temperature switch. back down good 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 and let's get a lamp hopefully the uh, color wheel is now quieter and the uh, DLP is now speckles free no longer looks like starry night Let's spin it. Oops, sorry. Spin it. And let's get my test keyboard. I have this I made up because I work on these quite often. Um, just have some gaff tape on the back to insulate it. But I did um, bypass the door switch, which would be those pins. There's a blob of solder on the back that shorts it out. So it makes it think the door is shut. So that means I can just plug it in like this rather than having to plug this in and sit it in the way. Now, obviously I'll still try it with that, but just for testing, this is what we're gonna do. All right, let me just move the camera. Okay, so, power. Oh, that color wheel's way quieter.
No little speckles. Get that focused. And don't worry about that. That's just the uh, the screen. But that's way better. Way, way, way better. I don't know if you remember before there was little speckles in there. Here, we'll even make it bigger. Drag it back. So now when the splash screen comes back up, we'll see it. Yep, see, no speckles, that's good. I actually want to, yeah, I wanted that to come up. You can see in the background. Don't worry about that rolling, that's a, uh, uh, what's the term, optical thing, where the camera shutter and my phone and the speed of the DLP chip are not synchronized. If I back it up, I think it'll go white, or if I, there you go, it's a little less annoying, but you get the idea. Um, but that rolling that you're seeing is not actually what I'm seeing. But this looks good. I uh, was hoping it would turn out well, and it looks like it did. So now I'm going to shut it down. And we'll get that top, we'll get the top reinstalled. And uh, give it one more test before I stick it on the other table and let it cook for a while. See you, Mario. All right. We've got the cover ready. Eh, it needs a little bit of wipe down, but it's not dirty. So we'll slide keyboard wire back under, latch it. Uh, when we set the top down, sometimes you have to watch out for the plastic uh, shielding under there that prevents light leakage. Lucked out here, it was already in place. Let's give it a little push. You feel it click. And then I'm going to put the top screws in here, and then those two screws, and then do all the rest of them. the uh <clears throat> pardon me remember it's the little ones come on there we go and then of course we have the lid in. That's held in by this screw. No, oh, stop shaking. shaking the camera every time I do this. It sure looks that way. Yep, sure does. All right, let's... Okay, now for the... putting the projector itself back together, you actually have two different sides of the short screws. There's two shorties that are for here and here. Then there's ones that are just yeah, and there's ones that are, you can see, about two threads longer. Those are the ones that go in the four perimeter spots. The super long one, that one, goes in the middle.
All right. So they are all back in. Now it just needs a cleaning. All right. So it's just a, a light spritz with some alcohol based cleaner. So get any schmutz build up off. That's pretty good. You know, I don't know when this is going to get cleaned again, so just gonna get these little crevices too while I'm at it. And wipe all that down, wipe out the inside. Because there is still like a very thin layer of dust. Ain't not enough to do anything, but if we're going to clean it, I'll clean it. Alright, so let's put this back on. And last but not least, Been on there about eight years. <laughs> there we go. All right. Let's plug it in. Put some video. with some TV shows on it so I'll just run that and then if this runs for another four hours or so that picture looks good so as long as this runs for a couple hours we'll uh, we'll be able to get it back and then the school can uh, be ready to go for the fall so let me let's see source looks like it's searching by itself Oops. Searching for source. Should have it here. There we go. Yep. All right. I'm just going to let it run. So there we go. If uh, you have any questions about replacing the bad DLP chip, in a uh, Polyvision PJ905 or similar, you can put it in the comments. And uh, if you don't subscribe, think about it. I just recently crossed the thousand subscriber threshold, which is pretty crazy in my mind. I never thought I'd get to a hundred, let alone a thousand. So thank you all. I really do honestly appreciate it. And as always,